All right, guys, so today we got to talk about New York dictator Kathy Hoko, who, in my opinion, is probably worse than Cuomo, okay? Uh, we thought that it was a victory getting Cuomo out of office, and uh, they just simply replaced him with an even worse tyrant, right? Because in my opinion, I, I think this lady is worse, right? I, I think that she is very, very, very authoritarian, very, 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 um, you know, pro-mandate, Okay, I mean, she's the one that's responsible for all the unvaccinated healthcare workers losing their jobs and stuff like that. Again, it's sickening stuff, man. Absolutely sickening. And uh, this story right here is kind of sickening as well. And there's a whole lot of irony to it, like there always is when it comes to these stories about uh, the Democrats and uh, their policies, as she has now declared uh, racism a public health crisis. Now, we've heard this before, right, particularly after all the George Floyd stuff. Uh, during a pandemic to justify BLM being out in the streets uh, protesting and rioting when uh, everybody's supposed to be at home, right? We're supposed to be hunkered down and locked down, okay? But see, the CDC and the public health authorities came out and said, no, 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 it's okay for them to riot in the streets, right? And, um, you know, a lot of whom were maskless uh, because, hey, you know, racism is a public health crisis. They use that as an excuse uh, so that they could justify these people being out in the streets, uh, potentially spreading the virus to each other when, again, the rest of the country was on lockdown. <laughs> so, um, yes, we're going to talk about uh, Hochul declaring racism a public health crisis because, again, the irony here is just absolutely uh, amazing. So let, let's let's talk about it. Uh, Governor Kathy Hochul signed legislation declaring racism a public health crisis in the state of New York. Quote, far too long, communities of color in New York have been held back by systemic racism and inequitable treatment, Hochul said. I am proud to sign legislation that addresses this crisis head on, addressing racism, expanding equity, and improving access for all. Hochul signed a package of legislation on December 23rd containing six bills that declare the public health crisis and implement uh, ways to address it. Legislation S70A slash A.2230 enacted the Hate Crimes Analysis and Review Act, which gives law enforcement guidelines for the collection and reporting of demographic data for hate crime victims and alleged perpetrators. The Hate Crime Analysis and Review Act uh, ensures that we collect accurate demographic data of perpetrators and victims to better protect the communities being targeted. Without data, the plight of many will remain invisible, said State Assembly Member uh, Karen Reeves. Additionally, legislation S6639-A slash A.6896A uh, requires the state to collect certain demographic information in order to keep a more accurate and relevant public record of um, Asian American populations in uh, New York. Anti-Asian hate crimes in New York City reportedly increased by 361% over the past year. Okay, so this is interesting. This is very, very, very interesting. Okay, because uh, this legislation, it sounds like to me is that they're going to get some uh, more demographic data, right, in regards to who is committing these hate crimes, okay? And it seems to me that there's, you know, kind of a uh, specialty here, a target in regards to uh, anti-Asian hate crimes and who's committing these crimes. And uh, in my opinion, in my opinion, I think what they're going to find <laughs> is that uh, there are some people uh, that um, are committing crimes against Asians, right? Anti-Asian hate crimes. And uh, they probably aren't all white, right? They're probably not all white supremacists. In fact, uh, probably a good amount of them um, probably happen to be black, okay? Uh, and the reason why I'm saying this is is because, according to the FBI, uh, most crimes against Asians, most violent crimes against Asians are committed by black people. In fact, uh, to be exact, 27.5% of them are committed by black people, okay? Um, so, I mean, I'm just saying, uh, this focus on racism, right, and stopping hate crimes, I'm just saying, I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, information they collect doesn't come to the conclusion that uh, they are looking for, that all these hate crimes are being committed by so-called white supremacists. Now, that's not to say that none of these hate crimes are being committed by uh, white people. A good amount of them probably are, okay? And Hispanics as well, too. And probably Asians as well, too, right? Committing uh, these crimes against each other. But what I'm saying is, is that, you know, if you look at the uh, Department of Justice statistics and all the videos that uh, we've seen on social media where it looks like most of these uh, Asian hate crimes are being committed by non-whites, New York probably is likely to come to a conclusion that 
they're probably not gonna like and they're probably not gonna publicize. <laughs> but if there's a white person that commits a hate crime against an Asian, oh, it'll be all over TV, right? Like the uh, Atlanta uh, massage parlor shooting that happened uh, last year, okay? All over TV, right? Everybody's talking about it. Anti-Asian hate everywhere, according to mainstream media. And hey, you know what? Listen, some of that is justified. However, the news coverage stopped. They stopped talking about it when there was a bunch of videos that came out that showing that, hey, um, it's not just white people committing these crimes. I'm just saying, it's funny how that works. It's just funny how that works. But the real irony here, guys, is the fact that after they declare racism, racism, a public health emergency, right? Public health. That's what we're talking about here. Um, New York came out with a memo that said that it will prioritize non-white people in distributing low supply of COVID-19 treatments. Yes, they're saying that we are going to consider being a minority, a health risk factor due to long-standing st systemic health and social inequities. So they're saying that racism is a public health crisis. Therefore, in order to address this public health crisis of racism, we're just going to be racist towards... Uh, <laughs> A certain group of people, right? Basically whites, right? That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. This is the world we're living in here. This is the world we're living in. Let's read here. The state of New York said it will prioritize non-white people in the distribution of COVID-19 treatments in short supply. Uh, New York's Department of Health released a document detaining its plans to distribute the treatments such as monoclonal antibody treatment and antiviral pills. The plan includes a section on eligibility for the scarce antiviral pills that people must meet to receive the treatment, including a line stating... A person needs to have a medical condition or other factors that increase their risk of for severe illness. One such rich factor is being a race or ethnicity that is not white due to long-standing uh, systemic health and social inequities. Non-white race or Hispanic Latino ethnicity should be considered a risk factor as long-standing uh, systemic health and social inequities have contributed to an increased risk risk of severe illness and death from COVID-19. The memo reads wow incredible <laughs> incredible in other words again discrimination based off your ethnicity and skin color wow <laughs> wow aaron silk a spokesperson for the new york department of health told fox news in a statement that the state's prioritization guidance comes directly from the cdc and that neither race nor ethnicity would disqualify an individual from receiving treatment that's not what it sounds like on a piece of paper it's not what it sounds like. That's not how it reads. It says it right here. Antiviral treatment is authorized for patients who meet all of the following criteria. All. All of the criteria. Including having a medical condition or other factors that increase their risk for severe illness. Sub bullet point under this. Non-white race or Hispanic Latino ethnicity should be considered a risk factor. So at the very least to me. At the very least it sounds like um, you may not necessarily be completely excluding white people. But you're saying, look, look, if you're white and you need this treatment, uh, you got to get to the back of the line. <laughs> you don't have all of the risk factors, right? You you might be white, but that's not a risk factor in and of itself, okay? Even if you're obese, okay, even if you have heart disease, even if you have, you know, some respiratory disease or something like that, uh, if it's between you and somebody else with all those same risk factors and they are not white, <laughs> then they're going to get the treatment over you. Or put it this way, you could also be denied treatment right not just put to the back of the line but denied treatment because let's say you meet all of these uh relevant factors right here right the first one two three uh four bullet points okay and that last bullet point again is that you have to have a medical condition or other factors that increase their risk for severe illness so you have to have all of it so if you're white and you have all of these bullet points but you don't have a medical condition or other factors that increase their risk of illness because they don't consider white right being white to be a risk factor in and of itself the same way they consider uh being not white a risk factor then you could just be denied right you could be denied that's what it sounds like that's essentially what it says okay that's essentially what it says um so <laughs> in my opinion guys i don't understand how anybody can read something like this and see something like this and say oh yeah 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 that's the right thing to do, right? In order to rectify what happened in the past, we have to discriminate against a certain group of people who literally don't have anything to do with what happened in the past, okay? They don't have anything to do with it. 
So you're hurting people who have nothing to do with what happened in the past because you want to be woke and virtue signal, right? You want to right the wrongs of the past, right? As if two wrongs equals a right. And I'm telling you, man, all of the like overt anti-white discrimination going on in this country, it's not going to end up well in the next 40 or 50 years, right? Because uh, with population demographics changing, uh, there's going to be a strong case for white people in the future just to be like, hey, you know, y'all systemically uh, discriminated against us, right? There was systemic racism against whites, right? And they're going to have a very, very, very strong case. And then they'll be asking for affirmative action, right? They'll be asking for all types of stuff because this is kind of how the pendulum swings, okay? Uh, when you fight discrimination with more discrimination, uh, there's a lot of people that are going to have a case in the future that, hey, you know what, I was discriminated against or that my uh, ancestors were discriminated against. Therefore, you know, you owe me this, you owe me that, <laughs> right? That's what's going to happen. That is exactly what's going to happen. And furthermore, on top of that, it's just going to make race relations even worse in this country, okay? When you, you, you see a certain race of people getting priority and benefits over other people overtly, <laughs> right, explicitly because of their race, uh, yeah, it's going to create racial tension, right? People going to feel like they're being screwed over simply because of their race. <laughs> and I mean, hey, listen, it's written right there on the memo, right? It's written right there on the memo. But, you know, hey, that's kind of what these politicians want. That's what the media wants. They want us to be divided by race. They want us to hate each other, right? That's what they want. That's why they do stuff like this. Even though for the life of me, I don't understand how in the world this is constitutional in New York, right? How in the world can they get away with this? This overt discrimination based off race. But, you know, hey, um, listen, uh, this is one of those things where I, I think is a, a huge issue in this country. Um, you know, me personally, I'm against all forms of uh, discrimination, and I don't believe that you can right the wrongs of the past uh, by being racist towards uh, people who <laughs> had nothing to do with what happened in the past. I just don't think that that's the right uh, step to be taken here. But some of these people are hell bent on doing this. They're hell bent on driving this country to a race war by uh, implementing policies like this that are overtly discriminatory, divisive, and that cause hate, right? That, that's what happens. But like I said, this is what the politicians and the media want. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.